Listen, while we have you for a few more minutes, I want to change the subject slightly. You are one of the first Muslim members of the United States House of Representatives, if not the first. You are the first. Uh, There is a big uh, controversy going on within the Democratic Party. Uh, Some people are calling the president genocide Joe, and they're making life miserable for some Democratic politicians by objecting to uh, U.S. policy in uh, the war uh, between Israel and Gaza. I'm wondering how you read that situation as a member of the Democratic Party and a professional politician with a presidential election that looks very, very close uh, just a few months away. Right. Well, um, again, I, I, Glenn, I know that you and I aren't going to agree on this, but I, I think that President Trump is an existential threat to American democracy. Um, I don't, I can name 10 reasons why I think so, but that's where I put it. So I think reelecting Joe with you, team. Right, right. So I think reelecting Joe Biden is fundamental and essential. And I think that, um, Joe Biden has insisted upon humanitarian relief and has even called for a ceasefire and actually did not, um, block the last ceasefire resolution in the United Nations. That's why. Netanyahu uh, canceled the visit. I think, but I also think that some people are naive about the U.S. relationship between United States and Israel. It, it's not. It's not based on one president. I think that if you want to change in that relationship, and you what you want to see is that Israel and the United States relate much more like United States and the United Kingdom, United States and Canada. If you want to see that kind of arrangement where. There can be disagreements. There can be arguments where if you don't do this, then we're going to do that. You want that. It's going to take more than one presidency. And um, because, um, you know, you got to give the people who are pro-Israel credit. They have been working hard on this for literally decades and they have done a good job. And they're as I would say they're as successful as well, actually, they're more successful than the NRA is because. Um, They've actually taken some setbacks, but there is they're a powerful group in terms of like, and it's not because of some anti-Semitic conspiracy. It's because of many years of work and relationship cultivation over a long period of time. And so I think that um, if we do need a two-state solution, I think that uh, I think that uh, Netanyahu is certainly bad for Israel and the United States. I think we need a new election, and we need somebody uh, in Israel who sees that. We can't do this every five, every two or three years, every two or three years back to, you know, the, the Israelis are fighting in uh, Hamas and Gaza. We're going to have to come to a solution that is stable. And that means Palestinian state, democratic, peaceful, and working on solving the problems of their people, like food, water, clothing, shelter, things like that. Um, so you you would so tell your colleagues on the left of you tell your colleagues on the left of the party to stand down uh, and not jeopardize well, Joe Biden's you know, reelection. I don't tell them stand down. What I tell them is that my opinion is Joe Biden needs to be reelected. Joe Biden is willing to talk about how the United States can support its ally Israel and have a Palestinian state. And I remind them that it was. It was Trump who said, let's have a Muslim ban. It was Trump uh, who said, finish the job when asked about Gaza. Uh, It was Trump who, um, you know, falsely said that Muslims were celebrating at 9-11. And and, I mean, do you you talk about jumping out of the frying pan into the fire? Come on, think about this. And then, you know, but look, but, but on the other hand, Glenn, you are talking about people whose loved ones are being killed in Gaza. I I got a good yeah. friend who I won't say her last name, but I'll say her first name. Her, her name is Hala, and she has she's a she's a well respected political activist in San Francisco, and she has had well over a hundred members of her family killed and many more than that injured. So it, there is an emotional aspect to this that I just hope that we understand, which is why I didn't publicly attack people when they said uncommitted. I said as long as we you show up in November, we're good. If you need to vote uncommitted to send a message, I get it, because you saw that in Michigan and in Minnesota, that message was sent. 
But uh, at the end of the day, uh, that's kind of how I feel about it. We got to return Biden to the White House. 